the Democratic Party is a private organization. We can adopt whatever funny rules we want. Nobody is required to be a member of any party. Mr. Dutre, don't feed me that. There are only two real parties in our country. They've picked our presidents for 100 years. And it's worked well for 100 years. Really? Even lately. Oh, sit down, you. These rules are designed to provide a checks and balances, if you will. What if the public, in some protest of sorts, voted for a comedian? You remember that Pat Paulson ran in 1968. What if Roseanne Barr or George Carlin or Carrot Top captured the popular vote? Could be an improvement. Down! The delegates and superdelegates, as a matter of conscience, have to be allowed to say, whoa! Well, so you would be. It's not really a democracy then. Classically speaking, no. I mean, suppose we were in the same situation as the Republicans, for example. And suppose John McCain, before the convention, succumbed to old age or senility. You mean he hasn't? <coughs> Should we stick in Mike Huckabee because he would be the leader in delegates? Can you imagine? The rules that we have in place are to affect a choice from the people to be affirmed or not by the delegates and superdelegates, and it is not automatic. But then what's the point of the primaries, really? It's just a guide. If the delegates are free to ignore the popular vote, then does that not violate one man, one vote? It's never truly been one man, one vote in this country. Let's face it. Look, I grew up in California, my wife in Wyoming. Now, in my home state, there are about 15 million registered voters. In my wife's, maybe 250,000. Both states have two senators which means my wife had about 60 times more voting power than I did in any senatorial election. Is that fair? I think so. Perfect? Of course not. Democracy isn't, nor is the democratic nomination process. Nobody here is denying that. But let's remember, if it wasn't for delegate independence, its possibility of backroom deal making, the nominee for president in 1932 for the Democratic Party would have been Newton Baker. Instead, we got Franklin Delano Roosevelt. My mother's uh, a friend, Vivian, uh, once told me, there are only two kinds of people in this world, Alan, them that drink Coke and them that drink Pepsi. Vivian got that notion, of course, from Coke and Pepsi. There may have been other colas, but Coke and Pepsi were the giants, billion-dollar behemoths, who in their own advertising would each refer to the other guy as the only alternative, just so long as people keep on gulping down one or the other. It makes you kind of wonder if they're in cahoots. Mr. Shore, as much as I enjoy listening to you go on and on and on, could you get to your case? When it comes to presidential elections, we again have only two billion-dollar giants in control. The American people might get to vote for commander-in-chief, but they only get two choices, Your Honor, choices selected by two very private organizations who are both in bed with big oil, big tobacco, big pharmaceuticals, big banking, every big you can think of. And as a result, we only get the candidates that big business and the two parties decide to favor us with. So where's the democracy? The sad fact is, it seems that democracy has lost its way. And as long as we remain a two-party system, we will forever be denied a taste of that delicious RC Cola, because Coke and Pepsi have cornered the market.